Today is the 1st of January, the start of a new year. 2023 was a pretty crazy time for Hypixel Skyblock. From start to finish, we had our fair share of chaos. From updates to bugs to insider trading, it had it all. So I guess the real question is, how did Hypixel Skyblock survive 2023? Well, 2023 saw the Wizard Tower actually become useful. For the longest time, people kind of just looked and wondered what would actually be going on inside. But I guess as Barry had a meltdown, it became pretty clear. The Wizard Tower would lead us to the Rift, a portal to an alternate dimension where everything's similar, but just not really quite the same. This weird and wonderful place, the home of very, very strange creatures. And to be honest, a complete and utter haven for Skyblock XP. And to be honest with the Rift, you either love it or you hate it. There's no two ways about it. From intricate puzzles to parkour that should be relatively easy, the Wizard definitely has us on our toes. At least he can't give the 3-5 to five business days excuse anymore. Now before 2023, this was as good as farming got in Hypixel Skyblock. You had to painfully build these farms, you know, obviously the, the builders one made it a bit easier. Um, but you still had to go to the effort of literally building out all these huge farms on your island and being a massive eyesore looking like a multi-story car park. Sure, we had access to, you know, some relatively decent tools. But the introduction of the garden took everybody by surprise. What an amazing update this really was. From visitors that will visit your private garden, offering base farm XP, garden XP and copper which is the garden's own currency, along with the chance to drop special items that can sell for a lot of coins, in return for some crops. Four completely new upgradable armor sets. Pre-built farms. You didn't have to go to the effort of building your farms yourself, for granted these aren't the most efficient farms you can ever find, but they're usable. This update gave new purpose to farming and made it bearable for a lot of people. Of course, it, it had its drawbacks, you know, this update made farming way more profitable too, and saw a huge increase of the volume of macroers farming. As a direct result of the garden update, we also saw prices go through the roof. Hypixel Skyblock really did hit a state of hyperinflation. We saw recombobulators double in price of what they actually are now, up to around about 15 million coins. Booster cookies well over 12 or 11 mil. It got to a point where each scroll that you could put on the Hyperion was actually not even purchasable on the bazaar because they were too expensive. They were over 500 million coins each. In a matter of weeks, a fully scrolled Hyperion rose from around about 1.5 billion to about 2.5. Things seem to have settled down now though. Before we go any further, if you are planning on purchasing anything from the Hypixel store, make sure to use code NITROS, it gets yourself 5% off. Also, you should subscribe to their channel. It would help out a lot. We're aiming for 100k subscribers before the end of this year. Before the end of 2024. It is a bit bold, and I don't know if it's doable, but we can always try. Also, you should join the Discord server. It's linked in the description of this video. We offer slayers and dungeon carries, so if you need carries or want to carry and make some coins, make sure to join. Talking about the garden, we now have more NPCs on the garden. The pest update brought us Philip and Pamela. Pests will now spawn on your island, essentially when there's four or more pets, they'll start to decrease your farming fortune, meaning that you'll need to go to the pest and basically eradicate it with a vacuum. Take it back to the NPCs um, and you'll get a farming fortune buff, so the swings and roundabouts. It seems like the main reason for this change was to maybe stop people from macroing. Not stop, but make it more difficult for people to macro, because essentially if people are macroing, obviously they're not at the computer, and um, if they don't hoover up the pests, then they'll get the far farming fortune decreased, meaning that they'll basically be penalised for not moving. In all honesty, the update isn't actually bad because it does allow you to get a lot more farming fortune, so I'll allow it. But I personally know of a lot of people that have sworn off farming just because of this, just because it's so much more of an inconvenience. Now it's no secret that majority of Skybot players don't really like Party Finder. What's worse than holding your own air dungeon run, completing most of the run, and then somebody else dying right at the end, throwing your S+. Can't say I've never done that before, obviously not on purpose, um, but it's annoying. Well, the Adventure Soul NPC was introduced into Skywalk in an update whereby solo dungeons is now possible. Now, this is great. I don't really think anyone opposes this. What a great thing. But prior to this, you had to at least have, like, um... Basically just somebody in your party who maybe, maybe it could be an alt, or maybe it's just somebody who doesn't really care. Just so you could start a dungeon if you wanted to do a solo. It was pain, and to be honest, it made no sense why you had to go through the pain of that just to be able to do a solo dungeon. So, yeah. Quality of life. How about we talk about the foraging update? 
And that concludes this segment of the video. Yeah, so anyway, um, how about the uh, the bestiary changes in the pet car update? I've got to say, just from a completely unbiased um, standpoint, this has got to be one of probably the worst updates I've ever seen. I, I, I know it's a lot of work to put together an update, but it's just not good. First of all, there is shenanigans, because if you want to increase your bestiary cap past, um, past 50 all the way to 60, then you essentially need to give... Um, uh, well, 10 pets to... to uh, is it George? Yeah, it's George. Prior to the update being released, um, an admin thought it would be a great idea to buy out the whole market, essentially, of pets that would be in high demand when the update comes out, holding onto them and making a ton of coins. Now, in real life, that would be insider trading. It'd actually be fraud, um, which is actually insane. <laughs> but just to think that that actually happened, an, an, actual, um, an actual Hypixel admin did that, it's just kind of funny to think... Um, I know people were quite mad about it, but honestly, I just think it's funny. Like, it just is. Of course, that, that led to um, a lot of people being angry. And also, if you wanted to get Beastary 60 relatively quickly, you you had to pay a lot of coins for it. That's fine, because surely the other half of the update um, was good. Okay, for instance, like, let's take this here, right? Okay, it's a, I have an epic um, Endermite pet. Level 65, okay. Now, th this update that, I, that we're going to be taking a look at, um, basically just makes it so... You know how you can upgrade pets in cats? You can upgrade the rarity at cat. Um, and you can pay cat flowers and she'll skip some time and so on. Well, Fan has a similar concept. Whereby you can kind of give Fan a pet. And Fan will um, level the pet up for you. Now, there's a few different ways that you can level the pet up. You can cycle through training type. You can do a, a type of training which is completely free you don't pay anything but you get a relatively little amount of xp um per day now of course you can um increase the type of training that you'd like to do um you can go even faster when you get to taming 60 um but but here's the thing right, that all cost coins so for instance if we want to get our endermite to level 100 okay until specific level and we modify the level to 100 um, we can see that it's going to take 476 days to level our Endermite up to a level 100 from level 65. You've got to consider that this is only level 65 and epic. Now, this is obviously absolutely ridiculous. Nobody's going to wait the best part of a year and a third to level the Endermite up to level 100 from 65. You're just not going to do it. You'll just do it manually. It is pointless doing this. Even if you put it on Ultra... Right, it's going to cost you 47 million coins, and it's still going to take 17 days. That's just bad. I'm just going to say it how it is. If it takes this long for an Enemite pet to level up, imagine how long it takes to level your G-Drag from level 0 to 200 for free. Decades. Literal decades. It's safe to say for now, if I want to level this Enemite up, I'll probably just mine. I'm, def I'm definitely not going to give it to fun. Yeah. Not to mention, um, Fan was actually... Th this NPC was closed when the update first dropped because um, Fan would have a tendency just to wipe your pets or wipe certain pets. So, you know, of course, a Skywalk update isn't a Skywalk update with its, with its controversy. Insider trading, wipes, it's only minor. And the Bazaar went through quite a lot of substantial change, actually. Um, I mean, it just looks a lot more cleaner. Everything just seems to be in the correct place. Everything used to be a little bit all over the place, but I guess this has gradually been kind of updated and upgraded for our quality of life of playing the game over the year. Just by hovering over a category, you can see the rough sell and buy price for all of the items within the category. Honestly, this is great. It's, I, I love the updates to the Bazaar. I love the way it is right now. It wasn't bad the way it was before, but it, it was a mess, and it's much easier and nicer to look at. And I just think... There's there's no downside. Also, is this how it should really look? Just thought I'd mention. Does anybody remember that time when simply just logging into Hypixel and, and, and kind of just logging onto Skyblock would actually get you completely wiped? Well, throughout the year, there's been maintenance that had taken place on the game non-stop, pretty much every week. There was some uh, particular maintenance that took place... Um, Oh, it was a, it was a good few months ago. Now, I think it was to do with the API, and something hasn't been basically fully switched over. And it just logging onto Skyblock and got you wiped. I mean, that's just crazy to think. Just logging. I mean, obviously everyone got reverted. Well, that was a pretty crazy time. There was also another time throughout the year when I remember Swavy got wiped, and a, a whole lot of other people got wiped. It's been a crazy year for Hypixel Skyblock. It really has. 
There's been so many issues with so many different things. But I think that's partially down to the fact that the admins and whoever works on the game is actually doing a really good job. Uh, let me explain, because that seems a bit hypocritical. Now, if you think about other games, I don't know, like other games separate that, to Minecraft, that, that are like a, their own standalone game, we take, for instance, and obviously Hypixel Skyblock is not on the scale, but take, for instance, a game like GTA V. When they bring out an update, imagine how many people they have working on it. Imagine how many people they have testing it, and so on. Compare that to Skyblock. Okay, there's nowhere near as many people working on these updates. It feels like it's a pretty tightly knit thing. They're trying to make the game better for us every single week. If you look, if you look through the patch notes, there is literally, I would say, probably maintenance or update, or, or an update, most of the time every week. And while sure, this game isn't perfect, so there's, there's things that need to be changed. We've been waiting for a foraging update for god knows how long. But the reason why there's been so many problems this year with wipes and bugs and everything like that, I guess it's just because there's been so many updates. And I guess with a relatively small team working on a lot of updates that are relatively big, there's bound to be issues. But at the start of the video, I asked the question, how did Hypixel Skybox survive 2023 because of the amount of issues that there's been? And I guess that's just because at the same time, there's been a ton of new updates, bringing so many new players to the game, which is really good to see. It will be interesting to see what this game looks like in another year's time. And 2023 for me has been a pretty damn crazy year. I think we gained the best part of 30 to 35k subscribers. Lots and lots of new people. We saw the birth of the Mega Core Pie Man, and a lot of people seem to enjoy that. I've made a lot of videos, I've talked about a lot of different things. You know, I might not have always been 100% right on everything. And Mii's Energy and Future 77 came together to do a, a build contest um, where we judged different builds and we gave out 4 billion coins to the winners. That was pretty cool. I did a 24 hour foraging stream. Um, so yeah, that was interesting. Honestly, that's kind of a little bit put me off streaming. That's why I've not really streamed too much this year. Um, I did that stream relatively close to the start of the year and I not really wanted to stream since. It's safe to say I'll probably not be foraging for 24 hours straight ever again. Uh, but I just want to say, I probably don't get to say it enough, but I just want to say thank you for everybody for watching the videos, um, for subscribing to the channel, um, for leaving the comments. I don't always read every single comment and i don't always reply to every single comment but i appreciate it regardless everybody who's joined the discord server crazy growth this year up to almost 35k members which is ridiculous i got creator codes i mean i, I would never have thought that would day would be coming i mean yeah thank you for everyone using my code i, I can't tell you how much i appreciate it i, I, I don't know i can't really put into words the power of creator code is it, crazy I don't really have too much else to say other than just thank you for a, a great year for me at least. Um, if you've not had the greatest year yourself, then let's hope that 2024 is going to be better. But I guess for me, it's time to crack on. Get thinking of some ideas for some cool videos for you guys to watch. Um, also, I'm going to be trying to upload a lot more shorts this year, so if you do see me pop up, then give them a watch too. But anyway, if you did enjoy today's video, make sure you do leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next one.